Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got another top five guns video for you. All right. Now I know that AR and AK owners all have their fanboys as to which gun is the best out of the two. So we thought today we would mix things up and really stir the pot and we would talk about the top five not an AK rifles. Now what do we mean by that? We mean that it doesn't use a traditional AK operating system but it uses some really cool features of the AK, such as accepting uh, AK-47 magazines, shooting 7.62x39, and you're kind of getting a sort of a hybrid or a marriage of the AK-47, and in many cases here, the AR-15, or in other cases, you're getting down the rabbit hole of what the AK can become mm -hmm. as a platform. Uh, I'd definitely like to take a moment to thank Big Daddy Unlimited uh, for helping us put this video together. Uh, this was very resource intensive and some of the stuff is really difficult to get right now with all the, the COVID stuff going on. Uh, so definitely want to thank them for helping us get this video together today. Uh, they, they do a great job of supporting us and getting us some of this hard to find stuff. So let's break into this a little bit. Um, you know, the, the price of these rifles can, can go all over the place in terms of the overall price and availability and uh, and everything like that. So let's just kind of pick one and dive in. Uh, we got some cool stuff to show off. Well, probably, um, so the last video we did was like kind of like not an AR, you know? So, I mean, if you want to talk about the KS-47, I mean, this is kind of not an AR and not an AK. Mm -hmm. um, we did a video on, on this a little while back. This is from PSA, from Palmetto State. Unlike some of the AR-15s that accept 762 by 39 magazines, like the standard 762 by 39 magazines, this actually has a mag well that accepts the standard AK pattern mags, uh, which is very versatile, especially if you already own some AKs and you want something a little bit lighter weight. The KF-47s are patterned after a small frame AR, so the bolt carriers, bolts, and everything like that are the same size, unlike uh, one of the other guns we're going to talk about in the latter part of the video here. but. Very, very lightweight setup, and these things are just superbly accurate for, you know, the platform. And, you know, if you're familiar with an AR-15, the manual of arms is exactly the same. The only thing that's different is the magazine and the lower uh, receiver to accept the standard AK mag. So It really does say a lot for the modularity of the AR platform because here, uh, this is the ideal type of rifle. Uh, for somebody that loves the a uh, AR but wants something that they can shoot 762 by 39 out of AK mags. This is everything that the AR, that's good about the AR and good about the AK, mm -hmm. <laughs> all rolled into one package. I mean, you got the, uh, AR furniture, triggers, compatibility, uh, nice generous magazine well that accepts drum magazines, which we're going to talk about that here in a moment. This one's topped off with a Leopold Freedom red dot sight, uh, and I got that one through BDU. Uh, as well. Okay, really cool stuff. And uh, the price on those things is just absolutely fantastic. It is. I mean, it is a PSA. All right, and so. of course we have a Magpul Mo P Mag. Uh, drops in there nice and uh, clean. Hey, Mo. Uh, in no particular order, we're just going to go down the line here. We got a SIG 5.56 XI. So uh, this is a 7.62 by 39 5.56. I know that's a weird. <laughs> <laughs> a weird thing, but the 5.56 five, five, is the model of mm -hmm. this rifle. It's basically a, a very much Americanized version mm -hmm. of the SIG 5.52 and 5.50 series of rifles. Um, now, this one actually belongs yeah. to our buddy Fred, so we had to borrow this uh, you know, to get it in the video. But the 5.56 the five, five, R series is kind of before, I think, the XIs. Um, you know, <laughs> they started going down this rabbit hole where they, they were turn, taking from the European... Uh, 556 five, style rifles and moving towards a more Americanized version which some purists would disagree with that uh, that approach but this is kind of the middle of the road rifle so it has some more modern furniture and such on there you've got some provisions for adding rails up front Fred's got a surefire um, what was that like a scout light on there yeah you know we've got a little vortex uh, one to four power gen 1 PST on top grip up front with his pressure pad for his light I mean, overall, just a really cool, versatile setup, and it shares magazines with standard AK-47s and 7.62x39 ammunition. I mean, and these rifles are just smooth as butter, too. They are. I mean, they're piston-operated, so they're very, very clean, as opposed to a traditional DI system like on the PSA. So this is a little bit more maintenance-intensive uh, setup right here. I mean, they do kind of poop in their own mouths, per se, just like we've talked about before with DI versus piston, but very, very, very excellent uh, and high quality rifles. 
Yep. From SIG. Uh, so out of the rifles we've introduced so far, this is the first one that you can actually utilize your folding stock mm -hmm. on there, which is nice. And this one is outfitted with a 51 tooth AAC adapter and it can run, you know, of course, AAC suppressor on there, which is nice. Um, really great gun. Uh, definitely represents considerable cost. Uh, th those rifles are not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. All right, so we're going to move down the rabbit hole here, and we're getting on to our next one in the lineup, and this is a IWI Galil Ace. Now, uh, this one is outfitted with a uh, suppressor. Now, I will mention that <laughs> we stuck a uh, suppressor alignment rod on the barrel of this particular rifle, and I was a little bit worried to pull the trigger on this thing for the first time with a can on it because it barely clears a suppressor alignment rod. So that had me a little bit worried, but um, shoots great. Out of the rifles we've showed off so far, both the 5.56 and the Ace do not accept drum magazines. Okay, the way that the Magwell on this is designed, it will not fit a drum magazine tower because it's so short. Um, it'll only take stick mags. But very intuitive location of the safety, really easy to get to. Uh, you know, so this one is is kind of an AK. I mean, mm -hmm. a Galil is an AK, okay? But the reason that I chose to put it in this video is because it is a very modernized AK. You can see we've got a full rail system on top, really solid uh, dust cover in terms of the mount of the top cover. Uh, the rail sections are hidden by these, you know, nice convenient panels right here that can be pushed off. Fully enclosed and protected front sight base that's fully adjustable. Um, just a great rifle. These things are fantastic. Threaded 5 8 by 24 for your um, muzzle devices, suppressors and things. Uh, you still get the folding stock mechanism, okay, which is really handy. This would make one outstanding pistol. Mm, absolutely. Okay. Uh, we they can do see... make outstanding pistols. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, we see that this one's outfitted with a little 3.5 power ACOG uh, with 7.62 by 39 reticle. So... This gun's pretty ready to go. Um, I, I would probably prefer this with a short barrel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this would make a fantastic SBR or pistol. But uh, for what we were able to get into this one for, I, I think you know the rifle's definitely cool, and the extra velocity in the 762 by 39 is, is certainly uh, not a bad thing to have. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Going back to the suppressor alignment on this particular rifle, the Ace does not have that same definitive shoulder for muzzle devices or direct thread suppressors to align against. Uh, so it's a little bit problematic. It's the same thing you run into with the scars and such. And uh, the co-centricity is, is okay. It's not ideal, but it does work. Um, but suppressing rifles like this without a definitive shoulder is a little bit problematic. And uh, something else to mention too, the Ace and the 5.56 here, uh, they both do utilize chrome-lined, hammer-forged quality barrels, and everything is nicely pinned in place. I mean, as you can see, the gas block front sight combo, it's, it's hard pinned. Uh, there's no way that stuff is going to come loose. I mean, it's just a very, very quality uh, rifle, and it's kind of a modern classic, if you will. It is. The Galil is a very, very classic AK pattern. Oh yeah. So. so this one technically is an AK, but I want to sneak it in there because it's something that maybe a lot of people may not realize it's out there mm -hmm. and it definitely doesn't have the appearance of a traditional AK. Mm -hmm. I mean, the left side charge is definitely, you know, an initial giveaway right mm -hmm. there. That's super convenient. Um, it, it really is the apex of what an AK could ever be, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why it's, it's important to at least give a nod to the Galil Ace because that's a really cool setup. Absolutely. Um, all right, we're going to move down the line. This is the M plus M, uh, M10X. Hopefully I got that right. Yeah. And this is, this rifle is sort of a homogenization, if you will, of many, many different, uh, <laughs> systems. Okay. And, uh, when I spoke to the owner, they claimed that there are many design elements that went in this gun. Uh, borrowing things from the AK, borrowing things from the Galil, borrowing a couple of things from the SIG uh, 550 series of rifles, um, many, many different things, but use a, uses a uh, folding stock mechanism, very, very high quality stock mechanism there, uh, uses an AK pattern grip, okay, uh, does accept AK magazines, it is in 762 by 39 completely adjustable gas system for many, many different uses. Uh, 5 8 by 24 thread pitch on the barrel. Very high quality, and these things are exceptional. They're very accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, they are outstanding rifles, and these have many upgrades 
that were integrated into them that Chad and I actually did a good bit of uh, experimenting and testing when this gun at first initially came out and we actually identified a couple of very minor little problems and M plus M went back to the drawing board and made those rolling fixes to the guns so it, it's kind of cool that we had maybe a little itty bitty tiny part to play in kind of helping this get to where it is now. A little bit of R&D on the back end. Yeah, a little bit of yeah. R&D, and what a cool rifle. So in the original video that we did on the M10, uh, they were utilizing, I think it was a Phoenix Technologies, uh, kind of a recoil reduction stock. Uh, we have not revisited this particular rifle yet, but- But the, we will. The gas system is definitely, a, is, is fully adjustable, and it really is just like the front end of a SIG 550 series. You know, this thing kind of takes, it kind of takes notes from like the FAL, the SIG, the AR, the AK. Yep. Um, the charging handle is reversible from side to side. And one of the neat features of it is kind of this monolithic upper. The receiver is actually internalized here to the, um, to the upper receiver itself. It kind of slides into these channels and then everything gets torqued into place. And it makes for a really rigid setup. And, um, you know, honestly, the thing is surprisingly accurate for just using standard pattern 760 by 39 ammunition. Mm -hmm. And it's just a super smooth recoil impulse. Just a wonderful rifle overall. And I actually modified one of the, uh, I think it was a, was it a TAPCO two-stage? It was one of the two-stage AK triggers. I modified one to fit in the rifle that I have that we've been doing a lot of testing with. But this one's topped off with a little primary arms prism. This is a three power with the uh, 762 um, 300 blackout reticle in there. Very, very nice little optic. Oh yeah. Um, and these actually have a definitive shoulder up there for running a suppressor, muzzle device and such on to keep that co-centricity. Uh, just a wonderful platform. And a lot of people don't really know about the M10Xs and they're kind of a kind of an outlier in the AKAR world. They so, are. And I do like that they added several different positions for the gas systems. You can really dial it in mm -hmm. for a suppressor. I mean, if you're wanting to shoot something that's not an AK suppressed, you, you basically want to shoot 762 by 39 suppressed and you don't want to use a dedicated AR platform mm -hmm. and you want something that's truly outside of the, of the realm of that, this is the perfect gun for that. Mm -hmm. And if you want to shoot suppressed, this is a great suppressor host due to the very flexible gas system in this rifle. Okay. Absolutely. Um, we are going to give one honorable mention before we get out of here. But uh, all right, we're going to move on to number five. Okay, the CMMG Mutant or MK47. It's no longer called the Mutant. I think it's called the we, Resolute. We call it the Mutant because we, still do. we like the word Mutant. But but they call it. I believe they call it the Resolute now. Watch okay. out now, there. Yep. Now, um, you can see that the magwell on this gun is very, very similar to the KS-47, or I should say the KS-47 is similar to this. I think this was around first. That's Maybe. okay. Uh, the CMMG Mutant Resolute is very, very different in that it actually uses a beefed up AR-10 mm -hmm. style bolt uh, that is very, very strong. So mm -hmm. this thing can handle any ammo you can put through it in any adverse weather conditions. It's super, super overbuilt. Uh, that does add a bit of weight. Mm. It is heavier than the KS-47. Um, now this one has a key mod full length. That's probably a 13, 15 inch rail somewhere in that ballpark with a 16 inch uh, barrel. Mm. Uh, we have a 51 tooth, two chamber uh, AAC, 30 caliber uh, muzzle device on this that I run my SDN6 on this. And I have shot a lot of hogs <laughs> and coyotes and all kind of random critters. This one's topped off with a FLIR thermal. And um, I absolutely love this rig. Um, I, I shoot the Wolf 154 grain soft point out of this. And I use the little 20 round uh, Tapco magazines mm -hmm. for hunting purposes. And that 154 expands really nice. Uh, it... it kills anything that I need to kill in terms of game, hogs, whatever, what have you, it does it. And uh, this has been one of my go-to hunting rifles for quite a long time. I like the Mutant. It's a really overbuilt and beefy gun that can handle adverse weather conditions. It can handle being knocked around and beat up and, and, and dropped and kicked and, and you name it. It's a very robust and rugged, well-built rifle that's accurate to boot, 110% reliable, and you know that you can depend on it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a few of the things. Now, it is rather heavy. Now, if you wanted to, you could definitely drop a considerably lighter rail system on this thing, or just like with the KS-47, uh, you could go with a lighter 
Uh, all right, pistol build, of course, and use a shorter barrel and then add a lighter fore end, and that can help trim some of the fat. It is a beefier and heavier gun than the KS-47. Mm -hmm. uh, now, out of all of the rifles that we've shown off, the M plus M, the Mutant, and the KS-47 will accept drum magazines. Um, no problem. The Ace and the 556 mm -hmm. do not accept drum magazines. Mm -hmm. That's just something to keep in mind. Um, a little more detail on the big advantage of the Mutant, the Resolute, over a standard uh, like AR-15 sized uh, AK pattern magazine rifle is the bolt. Okay, Eric mentioned that these can handle a lot hotter ammunition. Uh, the reason for that is because the bolt is the weak link in the small frame AR uh, that's chambered in something like 7.62x39 or like 6.5 Grendel, which use basically the same bolt face. As you, as you enlarge that bolt face, okay, the, uh, the lugs themselves, the meat around the lugs gets much thinner. Okay, so it's unable to handle as much pressure. You might be able to handle 60 or 62,000 PSI in the chamber, but you might only be able to handle 52 to 54,000 PSI on the bolt itself. Yep. Uh, whereas a regular AR bolt, you know, the, the web around the, the head is a lot thicker, so it can handle the full pressure. The Resolute here, the bolt face is sort of a, a mid-size. The bolt and everything, the receiver, is, is kind of in between an AR-15 and like an SR-25 or well, an AR-10. Well, it's a, what it really is, and, and I kind of, I got this term from Daniel Defense. I'm going to steal the term, but that's okay. It's a weight to strength ratio. Okay, so you go as big as you need to go on the bolt to get the strength to weight ratio uh, correct. Mm -hmm. uh, the strength to circumference ratio, whatever that may be. Like the idea that by making the bolt a little bit bigger, you're adding more meat to those locking mm -hmm. lugs. And of course, when you combine the excellent uh, manufacturing processes of CMMG, you get a really rugged system. Now, mm -hmm. PSA also makes a wonderful gun. Um, in fact, out of all of the rifles on this table, the PSA represents the best value. Mm -hmm. um, it is considerably less expensive than everything else on the table. Uh, whereby, actually, these four other rifles are going to be very similar in terms of price point, um, being anywhere from $1,000 to $1,400 uh, in that price range. So the PSA does win in its lightweight uh, handling characteristic and uh, its excellent price point. Now, uh, I know that Chad built a 6mm AR, and there are some bolts that you have to use for a 6mm mm -hmm. AR, and yeah, you wound up running, what, a 6.5 gram so, bolt, and you broke that bolt? Yeah, so, so tell them about that. All right, so what I was going to get to was um, the 6.5 Grendel and 7.62 by 39 bolts are fairly interchangeable except for the bolt face depth. It depends on your chamber. We're not going to get into that this video, but you can use a 7.62 by 39 bolt for some 6.5 Grendel chamberings, okay? And that's what my, my chambering is for my 6 millimeter. And uh, I I was hot rotting loads, okay? So I'm, I'm running super hot lows just trying to trying to get on the top end of of my uh ladder testing and such so i had several nodes i'm like yeah, i don't want to mess with those nodes down there at the bottom i want to mess with the nodes at the top okay so i wound up breaking a bolt uh after i think it was like 1400 rounds okay of, of pretty hot stuff and uh i started doing a little bit of research and there's a company called young manufacturing that makes a bolt that has oversized web, like an oversized web around the bolt face that is the maximum size that can fit inside of a barrel extension on a standard frame AR, which is really neat. So I'm, I'm working on testing that one right now in my rig, but you can use those young bolts in these rifles and be able to hot rod some loads. I mean, there are loads that are available for the Mutant that are specific for that rifle. They are loaded super, super hot on the very top end of the pressure. Uh, well, not only for the Mutant, curve. but the Anvil as well. There yeah. are 458 SOCOM loadings Absolutely. that are Anvil specific because only the Anvil can handle the mm -hmm. pressures uh, that are exerted. Now, we could talk about all this all day. But you but can we'll, definitely hot rod some stuff oh, you for that can. that oh, you, you cannot do in this. Yes, so. you certainly can. So <laughs> there, there's no such thing as a free lunch in physics, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, a beefier <laughs> rifle is going to be heavier. It's going to be able to handle a lot more abuse and higher right. pressure loads. A lighter rifle, yeah, easier to carry. But just know that, you know, it does have its, its, its inherent limitations. Okay, every Five Guns video has a wild card, guys. All right, so today's wild card... <laughs> Not an AK, 
This is an SKS, okay? <laughs> this is an SKS D model. All right, now this is, if I can get the mag out. Okay. There you go. This is an SKS that is purpose built to accept AK-47 magazines. Mm -hmm. You can see this big open mag well here, and uh, it is designed to accept <laughs> uh, AK mags. So how cool is that? Um, the Chinese military version of this gun, I believe, is called the Type 63. I hope I'm right there. It's Type 61 well, or Type 63, but the Chinese military issued a select fire SKS that mm. accepted AK-47 magazines. Oh, sure. now this I... is the export semi-auto version. And of course, they had to import them with like Monte Carlo stocks and thumbhole stocks and all mm. of that type of stuff. But if you look them up, the Chinese military did experiment with issuing mm. a select fire SKS that accepted SKS or AK Max. Mm. So you can get an AK type magazine and a regular SKS, but you have to pull the mag well out and um, or pull the magazine out and then use these special duckbill magazines. They're a lot more they're a lot more difficult to manage and load and everything like that. Just not quite as convenient as a standard AK pattern mag. Now I have one of these rifles and it's it might be what you're thinking of because it's a Model 63 and it's one of the late 80s imports with the longer like 20 inch barrel right. and everything. Now that one has the thumb hole stock on it. Yep. But I've seen some of these shorter rifles uh, with the thumb hole stocks the way they're imported. I mean, they, they change the import yeah, rules sometimes they so say much type around M, that time. Type M sporter, yep. Type D sporter, Type 63. Like they brought them in under a wide variety of different names. But they, they do a lot of work you know, on these magwells getting everything to fit right. And then this one is cut for drums. We have run drums in this before, and it runs beautifully. Right. But these are just a really, really cool classic example and kind of a marriage of a classic SKS and an AK. And you know? the coolest thing about this one is it is actually a machine gun. It is full auto. So that is cool. We're going to be doing a video on that before too long. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so you would ask yourself, why would... Okay, if the AK-47 already exists, why bother making an SKS that can accept AK mags. Well, why would you do that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, for one, the barrels are generally longer, okay? The barrels are very rigid, okay? And you get better velocity. So they're probably looking for ways to kind of improve the performance of the 762 by 39 you know, get a little bit longer barrel, a little bit better sight radius mm -hmm. with iron sights, uh, more velocity, maybe some inherent better accuracy, mm -hmm. better range out of their existing 762 by 39 and... The SKS in a machine gun runs ridiculously fast. Oh, they're so fast. The rate of fire is almost Looney Tunes fast. <laughs> it's too fast, right? So, I don't know. Maybe they decided, well, this isn't a very good idea. We'll just stick to the AK. But, um, <laughs> you know, the Chinese have always, you know, done a lot of really odd things like that. Yeah. And, and sometimes... Maybe you just got to know. I don't know. But um, Indeed. there's your wild card uh, for the top five video. We hope you enjoyed it. This has been the top five not an AK uh, video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, one honorable mention. All right. I promised an honorable mention. The PTR-32, okay, is a delayed roller blowback uh, rifle. I don't, didn't have one here to show you, although it really would have made it into the lineup. Mm. If you like delayed roller blowback and you like to shoot 762 by 39 from an AK mag, mm -hmm. the PTR-32 is an honorable mention. Uh, you scratch that delayed roller itch, and with a machine gun steer used and shooting it in full auto, they are absolutely the gentlest shooting 762 by 39 that you will ever get your hands on. The delayed roller blowback, super, super smooth recoil, mm -hmm. perfect rate of fire, not too fast, not too slow. And man, they, they are so much fun to shoot. It's the perfect thing if you're going to a machine gun shoot or something, you want to borrow somebody's pack. You're not going to be able to do that with any of these. The, the roller locks are just so versatile. Yeah. You know, oh my gosh. And man, and they are viciously reliable. So mm -hmm. definite shout out to the PR, uh, PTR 32. Look mm -hmm. those up if you haven't seen them. They're really cool. Guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. We really appreciate all of you. Uh, those of you who support us on Patreon, mm -hmm. thank you so very much. Those of you who purchase t-shirts over on the website, I'm actually showing off Tim's shirt. If that's okay, <laughs> go buy Tim's shirt. That's fine. We're, we're happy with that as well. Uh, t-shirts over on Ballistic Inc., great way you can support us and your other favorite content creators, not just us. 
Uh, and also those of you who purchase man cans over on our website, thank you so much. We're putting together some wonderful boxes that I know you guys are going to absolutely love and you're going to want them. So go over there and grab them because when they're gone, they're gone and we move on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so definitely check out a man can. That's a great way you can support the channel. Have a great day. Thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. Let the war in the comments section ensue about which is better, the AK or the AR. I know it's coming. Have a good one, guys. See you guys.